Yo, what's good guys? This is Theo here. Welcome back to Solo Learn. Everyone can code. We are on introduction to C++ programming, part 14. We are on the switch statement. Let's go ahead and get started with that. Okay, so multiple conditions. Sometimes there is a need to test a variable for equality against multiple values. So instead of using a ton of if, if, you know, if, else, if, um, this, this can be achieved with that, but we're going to learn about a different variation. So the switch statement is a more elegant solution in this scenario. It really depends. I don't know if elegant is the right word I would use, but maybe more resourceful in certain situations. Okay, so fill in the blanks to print. You can drive a car if the variable age equals 16. Print by lottery if the age is equal to, to uh, 18. So say if age is equal to 16, then, you, then print out to the console. You can drive a car. Otherwise... We want to print out buy a lottery ticket. Awesome. So the switch statement, let's learn about this. The switch statement tests a variable against a list of values, which are called cases, which, which just means, uh, you know, in the hypothetical case that the variable is equal to this, uh, to determine whether it is equal to any of them. So here we're going to switch on the expression. So I guess like say if we were getting some user input, we're going to switch on that user input. And then again, in the hypothetical case that the expression is equal to this, that, that, okay. And then we can also create a default case. And then inside of here, we can perform our logic. Say we can, you know, set the response to this or that, whatever it might be. And then finally, so that it breaks out of the switch statement and doesn't, you know, fall through all these cracks to the other statements. We need to set a break to end that control flow. Switch evaluates the expression to, to determine whether it's equal to the value in the case statement. If a match is found, it executes the statements in that case. A switch can contain any number of case statements, which are followed by the value in question and a colon. Okay, so which choice shows the correct, correct syntax for the switch statement? So it's going to be this. It's going to be switch, then the condition, and then almost like a function, your braces. Awesome. So next up, the switch statement. Here's the previous example written using a switch statement. So we have this integer age set to 42, and then we're switching on the age. age. So just, you know, change this out to 42. So let's switch on 42, right? So is it equal? This is, this case is almost like saying, if the age is equal to 16, right? So then we want to print out too young. Okay, so it's not. It's equal to 42, though. So we're going to print out adult, and it's not equal to 70, okay? And again, because you have this break here, as soon as it meets one of these conditions, it's going to exit that control flow and move on to what's ever after these braces in your program. Notice that notice the keyword break that follows each case. That will be covered shortly. Okay, cool. So fill in the blanks to test the age variable against 16, 18, and 21 values and print corresponding text to the screen. So we're going to switch on the age that we get. Then we're going to say case 18 because we already have a case 16. We're also going to create a, a break statement so we can exit out of this control flow. Awesome. Let's make sure that runs. Cool. So uh, one thing also is that in a switch statement, there's an optional de default case that can be used to perform a task when none of the cases is determined to be true. So here we have 25, right? We're switching on this age of 25. Is it equal to 16? No. Is it equal to 42? No. Is it equal to 70? No. Okay, so here's the default case. That, that just means if it's not equal to any of the uh, any of these values, this is like a otherwise. Okay, this is almost like the else. Um, then just print out this is the default case. The default statement the default statements code executes when none of the cases matches the switch switch expression. Cool. Um, so fill in the blanks to test the value of the variable x. If x is equal to two, or if x is two, print is two to the screen. Otherwise, the default case print the default case to the screen so we'll say switch on x and here we'll create our default case and then print the default case awesome so the break statement uh the break statement's role is to terminate the switch statement to break out of that control flow and move on with the program in instances in which the variable is equal to a case the statements that come after the case continue to execute until they encounter a break statement in other words Leaving out a break statement results in the execution of all the statements in the following cases, even those that don't match the expression. So what happens is as soon as it meets a case, say we took out um, to write, we get 42. So it's going to, it reaches this case. It's not going to print that, but because we don't have any breaks, it's going to fall through to all of these cases. So you got to remember to break out of that control flow. As you can see, the program executed the matching case statement, printing 
adult to the screen with no specified break statement, the statements continued to run after the matching case. Thus, all the other case statements printed. This type of behavior is called fall through. It's falling through to all the other cases. As the switch statement's final case, the default case requires no break statement. The break statement can also be used to break out of a loop. So why does the default case not require anything? Because syntactically, you're going to put it at the end. And in that case, you know, there's not going to be anything left after it. I would say it's still probably good practice to put it there, but you don't have to. Okay, so last thing. What would occur if we forget to insert break after a case? So it's not a compile time error. It's not nothing. It's the rest of the cases would be execute, executed because we have that fall through consequence. All right, cool, guys. Um, so that was it for part 14 of introduction to C++ programming here. Um, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and please subscribe and support the channel. It means a lot. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Take care. See you in the next video.